of our land are the great cities, man-made wonderlands of stone and steel. Busy streets teeming with people on the go day and night. City dwellers, wedded as they are to urban life, still retain an urge to see what lies over the horizon. Somewhere out there, beyond the haze and hurry of the city, are the great farmlands of mid-America. The limitless valleys where beef cattle range, where sheep graze peacefully under tranquil skies. Somewhere out there are the great rivers, the mighty Mississippi, father of waters. The Rocky Mountains, whose snow-crowned peaks rear skyward to breathtaking heights. The broad, sage-carpeted western valleys. The stark, sterile beauty of desert wildernesses. The thickly wooded Sierra Nevada, mighty mountain rampart which guards the golden land of California on the shores of the surging Pacific. But the West is not all ocean and desert, mountain and plain. Out there, too, are other great cities. Denver at the foot of the Rockies. Salt Lake City in the promised land of the Mormon pioneers. A friendly, modern city in whose center stands the renowned Mormon temple, topped by the gold-covered statue of the trumpeting angel Moroni. Oakland, with the serene waters of Lake Merritt right in the heart of the city, to provide relaxation for yachtsmen, fishermen, and strollers. San Francisco, jewel of the West, the city of unbelievable bridges. The eight-mile-long Bay Bridge leaps over the deep waters of San Francisco Bay. Spanning the fabled gateway to the Orient and the romantic islands of the South Pacific is the spectacular Golden Gate Bridge. Between San Francisco and Chicago lies the great western wonderland, beckoning the adventurous in all the great cities to see for themselves what lies beyond the ranks of towering skyscrapers. Chicago's Union Station is the busy gateway to adventure. An exciting moment every day is the departure of the most talked about train in the country, the Vista Dome California Zephyr, operated by the Burlington, Rio Grande, and Western Pacific marking the beginning of a thrilling Vista Dome adventure. On any trip across this exciting land of ours, there is much to see. And the California Zephyr offers the best way ever devised to see it all on the Vista Dome. Many passengers waste no time in finding a seat in one of the five spacious domes as the train speeds through Chicago's attractive suburbs and soon leaves the city behind. This was the first transcontinental Vista Dome train. In fact, the whole train was designed around the Vista Dome idea. Other trains have since added domes, but the California Zephyr still has more than any other and is the only train traveling a route with so much to see and scheduled to see the best of it during daylight hours. During the afternoon hours, the attractive Zephyrette makes dinner reservations for all passengers. This guarantees that there will be no waiting in line for the dining car. Every passenger will find his table ready at the appointed time. Then, in late afternoon, comes the first of the many scenic highlights of this Vista Dome adventure, the mighty Mississippi. 
Crossing the half-mile-long railroad bridge gives Vista Dome travelers a thrilling view of the great river which bisects our nation and recalls the adventurous days when the West was an unexplored wilderness. Like Old Man River itself, the California Zephyr keeps rolling along. Dinner in the diner, one of the pleasantest aspects of travel by train. In an atmosphere of friendly luxury and tasteful decor, all the niceties of service are observed on the California Zephyr. Spotless white linen, gleaming silver, sparkling crystal, and Colorado carnations on every table. And the menu always includes a wide variety of delicious entrees to suit the most fastidious taste. The dinner hour is a happy hour on the California Zephyr. All the while, the train is breezing along westward, following the golden rays of the setting sun. All sleeping car accommodations of the California Zephyr are the ultimate in modern design and comfort. Ideal for one person traveling alone is the roomette, marvelously compact, yet offering the luxury of complete privacy. The roomy lounge seat for daytime use converts easily into a full-length single bed. And each roomette has its own completely private facilities. finds the California Zephyr racing toward the towering Rockies, which will provide a day-long series of spectacular scenic thrills for Vista Dome adventurers. During a brief stop at Mile High Denver, the train gets a complete shower bath to ensure that the train is sparkling clean. It's interesting to watch the process from inside one of the Vista domes. The dome windows get an extra special scrubbing. Then a final rinse completes the job. At Denver, the Rio Grande Railroad takes over from the Burlington. A more powerful diesel locomotive, geared for mountain grades, eases the train out of the Denver station, and soon, Vista Dome adventurers are enjoying the approach to the nearby mountain rampart. In a brief half hour from Denver, the train reaches the base of the Great Range, which challenged pioneer railroad builders to achieve the impossible. Beginning its climb, the route angles along the steep face of the front range. A series of tunnels cut through sloping sandstone outcroppings provides a succession of trails for Vista Dome viewers. Between tunnels, a breathtaking panorama of the boundless Great Plains spreads out below. These are the first of 46 tunnels the California Zephyr will pass through today, ranging in length from 63 feet to more than six miles. The route swings westward, deeper into the mountains. In view now are the towering peaks of the Continental Divide, capped with eternal snow. Further west, deep in South Boulder Canyon, the California Zephyr follows the sweeping meanders of this stream car passageway. Up ahead now is lofty James Peak, 13,260 feet in elevation. Through its massive base runs the Moffat Tunnel, which made possible this spectacular railroad route through the Rockies. Here, the California Zephyr reaches the high point on its transcontinental journey. 
9,239 feet above sea level. West of the Moffat Tunnel, the route leads down the sunset slope of the Rockies. Soon the train is alongside the fabulous Colorado River, which it will parallel for 238 miles through a bewildering succession of valleys and canyons. The panoramic sweep of Middle Park, vast mountain rim bowl, is soon left behind as the California Zephyr follows the rushing river into the depths of Gore Canyon, one of the most rugged of all western chasms. Jagged cliffs and spires of dark granite stretch skyward a thousand feet or more above the river. The canyon opens out briefly into a broad valley, then merges into the colorful and grotesque sandstone formations of Red Canyon, further down the Colorado River. The crimson pagodas, chiseled by the elements into the fanciful likeness of Buddha's temples, have withstood the onslaught of time. Swelled by the waters of the Eagle River, which joins it at Dotsero, the Colorado enters the most beautiful of all its gorges, colorful Glenwood Canyon. Walls of pastel-tinted stone, formed by erosive wind and water into fantastic shapes, tower high above the river and the railroad. After crossing the river at Glenwood Springs, Passengers get a brief glimpse of one of Colorado's most beautiful peaks, symmetrical Mount Sopris. On to the west, the narrow upper canyons of the Colorado River open out into the vast Grand Valley. The character of the landscape undergoes a gradual change as the California Zephyr crosses the state line into the weird and fascinating desert of eastern Utah a land of grotesque buttes and oddly broken terrain. A colorful western sunset signals the end of a perfect day. As the passengers enjoy a leisurely dinner and perhaps a visit in the lounge car, the Pullman porters are busy converting the rooms into restful sleeping quarters. While the train speeds on through the gathering dusk. For the passengers, there's carefree luxury and relaxation. The spacious rooms of the California Zephyr provide full-sized beds for two people, invite restful slumber at the end of an adventurous day. The busy business of railroading goes on through the night as alert crews speed you on to destination on time and in complete comfort, day or night, fair weather or foul. Next morning, a brilliant California dawn heralds the entrance into the Golden State. The California Zephyr crosses the Sierra Nevada at Beckworth Pass, route of the 49ers whose search for gold led to the development of California. As the train begins its journey down the fabulous Feather River Canyon, over a hundred miles of breathtaking beauty, most passengers seek the vantage point of a Vista Dome. Or the observation lounge in the rear car. In the upper canyon, there's an ever-changing panorama of forested hillsides. 
thick stands of pine and spruce, which grow straight and tall in the California sunshine. The Western Pacific route down the Feather River is another engineering masterpiece, bridging deep chasms and cutting through mountainsides to maintain an easy 1% grade giving Vista Dome adventurers a succession of scenic thrills. As it hurries on toward the Western Ocean, the rushing river has cut a deep serpentine path through the rugged Sierra, a canyon of countless delights. The five Vista Domes on the California Zephyr provide a total of 120 unreserved seats, which means there are always dome seats available. The lounge also offers a pleasant spot to relax. One of the features which distinguishes travel by train is the complete freedom to move about and the great variety of accommodations available. Vista Dome adventurers are fascinated by the constantly changing appearance of Feather River Canyon. The river was named by Don Luis Arguello, a Spanish conquistador who discovered it in 1820. He was intrigued by the quantities of wild pigeon feathers he saw floating on its ripples and called it Rio de las Plumas the River of Feathers. At Keddy, named for the pioneer who first surveyed a railroad route down the Feather River, the train crosses another spectacular trestle. It was near here that gold was discovered in 1848. One of the strikes which brought swarms of the adventurous into California in 49. Millions were taken from the sandbars in this canyon by panning and placer mining. There is still treasure here in this rugged winding gorge for today's adventurers. A treasure of matchless travel thrills. In a number of places, the river has been dammed to provide hydroelectric power, producing long stretches of deep, still water, enhancing the natural beauty of the canyon. Near the mouth of the gorge, railroad and highway bridges crisscross. This part of the canyon is rich in early day history. The foundations of many fabulous fortunes rest on the sandbars of the Feather River. After a morning of ever-changing beauty, many travelers seek quiet relaxation in the lounge. Forward in the train, catering to all passengers, is the San Francisco cable car room. Its decor inspired by the quaint cable cars, which still provide San Francisco with a form of transportation pleasantly suited to its hilly terrain. This cable car coffee shop lounge offers sip and snack service from early morning to late evening. Sandwiches, salads, plate lunches, and a wide variety of refreshing beverages. Detailed models of San Francisco cable cars add another colorful touch. A lounge section under the Vista Dome is a pleasant spot for a friendly game. And a similar haven in the rear observation lounge car is equally popular as journey's end approaches. Forward in the train, the coach porters pamper their passengers with free pillows for those who want to relax. 
and relaxation is easy in the big roomy reserved seats. Each has a built-in leg rest and a full reclining seat back for perfect comfort. mile journey, the California Zephyr winds down Niles Canyon, which slices through the coastal hills on the approach to the San Francisco Bay Area. Though the train itself terminates at Oakland, San Francisco-bound passengers cross the Bay Bridge on special motor coaches and get a thrilling view of the city. San Francisco is an exciting metropolis, as modern as today, yet rich in history and tradition. Most visitors are fascinated by the jaunty cable cars. Long since outvoted by more modern forms of transportation, the cable cars survive not alone as a result of their sentimental appeal, but also because of their mastery of San Francisco's incredibly steep hills. Riding them is a way of life to San Franciscans, a fun-filled adventure for visitors. One of these surviving routes leads over Knob Hill and down, down, down to the Hyde Street Terminus. From here, it is just a pleasant stroll to Fisherman's Wharf, another favorite attraction. Surrounded by restaurants of worldwide renown, the wharf is the headquarters for the extensive fleet which fishes the nearby waters of the Pacific. at hand, an historic old windjammer, keeping alive memories of the adventurous days when sailing vessels roamed the seven seas to link San Francisco to all the world. Southern California, too, is within easy reach of California's Zephyr travelers. The hills of Hollywood, the miles of open sandy beaches, the many other attractions of Southern California, all are available as a side trip from San Francisco at no additional rail fare. For many, the Golden Gate so richly symbolic of the San Francisco Bay Area is the scenic highlight of any visit to the West Coast. And the glamorous city by the Golden Gate is a modern Babylon beloved by all. Across the bay in Oakland is the western terminus of the California Zephyr. In mid-morning, the busy bustle of train time enlivens the departure of the eastbound Zephyr the start of a homeward journey for some, the beginning of a thrilling Vista Dome adventure for others. Every season of the year is travel time on this weatherproof route, equally thrilling, equally beautiful. Most colorful season is autumn, the Indian summer of the Red Man, who knew and loved the crags and canyons of the Rockies many centuries before the first tentative explorations of European adventurers. The brilliant colors of the foliage, produced by the first cold nights of fall, make this a memorable and picturesque time to travel. Winter time, too, is a time of beauty in the Rockies and the High Sierra. A mantle of sparkling white softens the jagged contours of the canyons and transforms the evergreens into freshly decorated Christmas trees. Ski enthusiasts have discovered that the California Zephyr is the ideal way to travel to the famed winter playgrounds of the Rockies. Giving passengers all the thrills of wintertime travel in the mountains, 
without any of the discomforts. It's always warm and cozy at a Vista Dome, regardless of the temperature outside. time in the Rockies is fun time for the adventurous. At historic Espen, a ghost town come alive again, many of the quaint old buildings of the 80s, such as the historic Jerome Hotel, have been restored and provide a fascinating contrast between old and new. Aspen is but one of many resorts which offer winter sports enthusiasts the ultimate in skiing facilities. take the drudgery out of the uphill climb, offer a traveling panoramic view of the action on the slopes. part of skiing is a little more strenuous, but with an endless variety of slopes, skiers of every degree of skill can find sport to their liking in the Rockies. After a skiing vacation, it's pleasant to be back on board the California Zephyr to relax and just ride along. or summer, spring or fall, the California Zephyr offers the matchless way to see the matchless variety of beauty of the scenic route across America. Truly a memorable Vista Dome adventure.